you know, there's this whole thing that I hear when I talk to uh, people who, at least for the first time, or maybe even seasoned buyers, they're like, hey, you know, why do I need a specific type of realtor? Or I would suggest a realtor because, you know, I'm trying to partner with the best of the best to have that great team for the client. And they're like, why do I have to work with the person that you're recommending, like Kevin? Why do I, you know, should I, why can't I just go interview or find somebody that, you know, I just Google through, I mean, all they're going to do is show me homes uh, and I would say, well, they know this, they know that, or they're going to do correct market comps. He's like, oh, Zillow's doing market comps, you know, like, why should I, why should I even bother going with Kevin? Like, what would you say to someone like that? Um, well, I would tell you this, that um, once again, best way to describe it, I, I honestly look at myself and our team as for the buyers as your real estate sherpa mm. <laughs> you know <laughs> we've we've climbed the mountain we've been there before we you know each each climb there's going to be you know there's always something a little different that happens but so much of it is always the same mm -hmm. we've been we you know we we know what the hurdles are we know what the pitfalls are we know um you know when it comes to simply writing a contract once again having that relationship and the networking with the other agent you know being the fact that you know half the time i'm working for the seller and half the time i work for the buyer i so intimately understand the psychology from both sides of the fence mm -hmm. that you know you really a buyer really needs an agent who understands both sides of the fence like how do we make this a win win where it's a win for the buyer and a win for the seller um and and you know once again um navigate all the way through from not only just the writing of the contract to competing and hopefully winning that through the whole scenario from, you know, the appraisals and home inspections and all those type of things. So, you know, once again, there's no transaction that's ever exactly the same. However, 90% of it is the same yeah, yeah. on every transaction. Yeah. It's that 10% that, that is different. And, um, you know, once again, I mean, we know the path. We've been there before. You know, if I was going to go climb Machu Picchu, I'm not going to do that on my own yeah. because I've never been there before. Yeah. I'm going to get... I'm going to get killed. I'm going to get eaten, uh, you know, by some animal or something. And um, the buyers are the same out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I always say, Chris, this may not be the most PC um, uh, analogy. <laughs> so I kind of compare it to, you know, and this is exactly what I tell buyers. You know, right now, you're going out and looking for a home right now. There's so few out there and it is so competitive it's a little bit like if you were going out trying to hunt down a grizzly bear. Mm. Um, now, I know we're not supposed to be hunting grizzly bears, but just kind of stick with me. <laughs> it's a metaphor. Metaphor, it's a metaphor Peter. people. Come on, we're all adults here. Um, but if you're going out to hunt a grizzly bear, you need everything. You need to be yeah. prepared. You need, the, you need to know how to hunt it. You need to know that once it's in range, how you strike. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to have the proper... Um, you know, proper weapons, proper everything in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go out there hunting for a grizzly bear and the only thing you've got is a squirt gun, <laughs> you're going to get killed. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're not going to be successful in hunting a grizzly bear. Yeah. And, and even worse than that, you're probably going to get killed because you're just going to be annoying it. You're going to mm -hmm. be poking that bear. And so you need to become prepared. And that means, once again, I always say defining your team before you even get out there searching, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who's going to be your mm -hmm. your 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 real estate agent? Who's mm -hmm. going to be that real estate sherpa for you? Who's mm -hmm. who's been there before, walked the path, knows the path, knows how to successfully get you to the finish line? Who's going to be that mortgage mm -hmm. sherpa? Are they going to be working and collaborating together? Who's going to be title? Mm -hmm. You know, who's going to be potentially my home inspector? Mm -hmm. You know, those type of things you should really know. Mm -hmm. And if and if interviewing is important to you, and I think that it should be, you should interview these people ahead of time to know who your team's going to be. At, you know, so it's not like, oh, okay, I found the grizzly bear. Now what do I do? I mean, that's what people get on Zillow. Yeah. That's yeah. what people get on Redfin. Mm. You know, they can find the properties. They think they're so darn cute because they're, ooh, ooh, look at this. I found <laughs> it on my own. First of all, I will say, this is a topic for another conversation. Not everything that is on the market you're going to find on Zillow or Redfin. Mm. 
There's also hidden inventory. Mm -hmm. Did a video about this one, Chris. Mm -hmm. So you might want to link that one yep. that you can find as properties that aren't even on the market. But, you know, you'll find 98, 99% of the properties on Zillow and on Redfin. But okay, so you find it. Mm -hmm. What's next? Most people don't think that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I found it. What do I do now? Mm -hmm. You know, so to me, you, that, you know, if you're a home buyer out there, you should be defining your team early. Mm -hmm. You know, um, who's going to be my mortgage lender? Who's going to be my realtor? Are they able to work together? And then the extensions from there. Who's going to do title? Who's going to be my home inspector? Mm -hmm. You know, those type of things. I think what, one thing that probably a lot of folks think is, oh, I don't want to waste the realtor's time. I don't want to waste the lender's time. I don't, I'm not even sure if I, I really want to buy a home right now or yet. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, me, you know, piggybacking mm -hmm. on what you're saying, it's like, you guys aren't, you know, wasting our time. I think it's wasting our time if you weren't even qualified and you went to uh, Kevin and said, hey, I want to look for a half million dollar home, but all you can afford is 250. That's where, right. you know, it's like having the, the right sequence of events. I always like to, you know, like, I think home buying is like, uh, you know, it, it's another uh, result, right? It's a successful result of buy, purchasing a home. And I think the pattern of success that I share with a lot of folks is kind of like unlocking those, uh, those deadbolt locks, the turning locks mm -hmm. that when we used to go to school, uh, and put on the lockers, I don't even know if they have that now, or if it's all thumbprint, but when we, <laughs> <laughs> when we used to open it, it's like, you know, that's, you know, the numbers, but it's right. the sequence that's important, right? If you don't right. know the right sequence, you're never going to unlock that lock. And I think right. the first sequence that you're, 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 you're bringing up is building your team of realtor and lender. That's the first thing to do. And then from there, you know, we can step, start moving forward to looking at homes, finding a title company and all sorts of other things. But that's the very first step. It's not really looking at the homes. It's, it's getting your team structure correct at the beginning. 100%. 100%. And you know, um, you didn't really ask me this question, but I'm going to give you like a little bit of a shout out here. Um, you know, on the on the first transaction we worked with, um, these buyers found both of us off of YouTube. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, which I think is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think I, I honestly, it's like the people that contact me off of YouTube. <laughs> it's like I almost get, it almost brings a tear to my eye. It's like they like me. They really like me. Um, <laughs> It's the, it's the influence, influencer syndrome. <laughs> it is. It is because it's like you do these things to put yourself out there and it's yeah. like, gosh, does it really make a difference? Does anybody really care? Is anybody watching? Does anybody listening? Does what I put out there bring value? And when mm. somebody raises their hand and says, hey, I saw you, I like, you know, you know, will you work with me or how do you know, what do we do to take the next steps? It's phenomenal. And, um, you know, this client that, you know, I'm mentioning, you know, they contacted me off of YouTube. They had been working with another agent, hadn't been successful mm -hmm. with them. Um, agent really didn't prepare them for anything. Once mm -hmm. again, typical plan. agent, yeah. just sending them links. They go out and drive around and call me if you see something that looks good. I mean, no, no proactivity, mm -hmm. complete 100% reactivity, passiveness, mm -hmm. ridiculous, you know, because they're never, they would never be successful in this market. Mm -hmm. They contact me off of YouTube. You know, we do, I do the presentation, you know, I ask them if they had a mortgage lender because, you know, obviously I work with good mortgage lenders. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't work with just any old schlub out there. They told me they had a mortgage lender and I was like, okay, that's great. I mean, you know, didn't really want to like you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this guy, whatever. Um, and, uh, you, you know, but from the moment that I spoke to you, and this is before, you know, I really had even shown them a house before, you know, started taking them out, but we we're just kind of putting those building blocks yeah. in place, defining the team. You know, they told me that they found you off of YouTube and I'm like, okay, well, if he's been on YouTube, you know, then he obviously has a certain level of professionalism, mm -hmm. takes his job seriously because, you know, we're that 1% who do that, yeah. you know, I mean, not very many, and you don't have to be a great agent, you know, if, if you don't have to be a great agent, you know, to be, be on YouTube or whatever. But when you see people who, you know, are putting out good content and everything on a regular basis, you're like, okay, that's obviously a certain level of professionalism mm -hmm. out there. I mean, you just have to like that, you know, mm -hmm. you have to admire that somebody's putting themselves out there, giving content away for free, mm -hmm. you know? And so, 
you know, I contacted you. We spoke on the weekend. Um, I, I never forget it. And I just said, hey, Chris, you know, um, you know, I'm working with these clients here. My understanding is you are too. Yep, Kevin, nice meeting you. Thanks for the call. And we talked about it and we kind of collaborated right over the phone. And I said, this is what I need. This is what mm -hmm. I expect. I want to make sure you can deliver. Like yeah. I expect, you know, I'm not a jerk. I'm not going to call you and text you and bug you in the middle of the night just to bug you. But you know what? I need to know that if these guys find a property and I need a, a, a pre-approval letter at 8 p.m. on a Thursday, that you're at least going to be responsive to me and you can mm -hmm. at least have something to me by the next morning at best, you know, mm -hmm. preferably sooner than that. You know, I also need to know that you're willing to pick up the phone, make a phone call to that other agent who's rep who's representing the seller yeah, yeah. to once again, be that one, two punch between mm -hmm. me and you advocating for the buyer, making sure our story lines up together, that it's not like I'm saying one thing and you're saying something completely different to make sure that our case is rock solid. That's advocating for our, you know, your customer, my client there. And so it became, it, you know, it only took me 10 minutes on the phone to realize that you had that level of professionalism that they needed to be mm. successful. And mm. at that point, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't need them going anywhere else. You know, if they had a mortgage lender who was at a credit union and like, yeah, I can't return calls after 4 p.m. I'm going to tell the buyers once again, hey, your choice, you can use them, but I'm going to tell you you're going to lose some houses. Are you prepared to lose some houses? I mean, because if you are, then that's okay. Actually, it's not okay because it's not okay for me. It's mm -hmm. not okay for me to be putting my time in mm -hmm. when you're working with somebody who's completely inferior on the other mm -hmm. end. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of how you and I met and everything. Yeah, yeah. And, it, you, you know, that transaction was super smooth. I mean, yeah. you know, I think we closed it in two weeks or whatever, yeah. you know, no problems whatsoever. And so, you know, that's, that's, you know, I became a big believer that. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I mean, I was like, whoa, I, I just met a YouTube star that called me. I was so excited. Yeah. yeah. Huge. Huge. <laughs>